This video is all about quarks and is based on the 2015 AQA AS level specification. Now, in chemistry, you may have learned, oh, you know, the proton is a fundamental particle, oh, a neutron is a fundamental, no, 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 don't listen to any of the bollocks chemists tell you. Quarks are fundamental particles and are the building blocks for hadrons, and consequently, antibarons and antimesons are made from antiquarks. The three we need to know about are the up, down, and strange quarks, and of course their uh, respective antiquarks. We're also given uh, the quantum numbers for all of these in the uh, data sheet in the exam. There are actually six quarks, the other three are charm, top, and bottom, but we'll focus on up, down, and strange. As you can see, the charges and baryon numbers of all these are in thirds, but as we know, uh, particles need to have a whole number of charge, so that's why some quark combinations just do not work. Let's talk about baryons. As we know, baryons are made up of three quarks, and here's how. If we look at how a proton and an antiproton are made, a proton is made up of up, up, down. This is because the total charge adds up to one, as you can see, and the baryon number adds up to one. Three quarks is always going to give you a baryon number of one. It's inevitable. Unless, of course, antiquarks. As you can see, with antiquarks, all the quantum properties are shifted. Instead of the up quark having two-thirds charge, it's got minus two-thirds charge. And the anti-up, once again, has minus two-thirds two charge. And the anti-down, instead of having minus a third, has plus a third, which results in a total charge of minus one. All the antiquarks have baryon numbers of minus a third, so therefore that's why the uh, antiproton has a baryon number of minus one. We can do the same thing for the neutron. Up, down, down, that adds up to a total charge of zero and a baryon number of one. And the anti-up, anti-down, anti-down adds up to, once again, a total charge of zero, but a baryon number of minus one. Let's talk about how mesons are made. Well, pions are just made up of up, anti-up, up, anti-down, down, anti-up, down, anti-down. Anti it's just made up of a combination of up, down, and their antiparticles. That's it. All mesons have to have a quark and an anti-quark pair. That's all it is. Kaons, however... They have strangeness, so they always contain a strange quark with either an anti-up or an anti-down, or an anti-strange quark with an up and da or down quark. Now, strangeness is strange, okay? That's why I've been dodging the topic for a while. It's, it's just a quantum property, a quantum number. It's a property that all quarks have. Like baryon and lepton number, all particles have this property. Unlike the baryon number and lepton number, however, strangeness is not always conserved. It's only conserved in the strong interaction. And of course, a particle with strangeness of one will have an antiparticle of strangeness minus one. It literally, it works the same way in charge works and all that. It's just, it's just a fancy quantum number. That's it. That's it. The lone quark? No, you cannot get a quark on its own. No. Let's move on to an exam question. This is a question that I had in my most recent exam, and uh, I thought it was quite a good question, so I thought I'd uh, bring it up. Now that we've got all of our knowledge on baryons, mesons, classification, quarks, uh, interactions, everything, we've got all of our knowledge sorted. Let's bring up this question. So, we've got this interaction. We've got a, a uh, negative kaon interacting with a proton. That goes into a positive kaon, a neutral kaon, and X. We don't know what X is. However, we're also to told that strangeness is conserved in this interaction. So we need to find out what X is. The way we do this is we essentially deduce the quark structure of it, okay? So the first thing we should look at is charge. All right, well, what's the charge on the left side? Uh, Kaon has a charge of minus one, and proton has a charge of plus one. So we've got charge of zero on the left side. On the right side of the interaction, we've got Kaon has a plus charge. K neutral has zero. So, so far, we're on plus one. We then need X to have a charge of minus one for the charge on both sides to be equal, zero, zero. So... X must have a charge of minus 1. So now from this we know that the quarks must add up to a minus 1 charge. Okay, let's deduce whether this is a uh, baryon or a um, meson. We know it's not a lepton because we're told strangers is conserved. So, is it a baryon or is it a meson? Well, the baryon number on the left side is uh, 1 because a kaon isn't a baryon, but a proton is. So we've got a baryon number of 1 on the left side and a baryon number of zero on the right side, so X must be a baryon. There must be, th and from this we can deduce that there must be three quarks. We're also told that strangeness is conserved, so let's deduce the strangeness of uh, each side. So K minus has to have a quark structure, which includes two quarks, because it's a meson. It has to be a quark anti quark pair, and uh, it has to have a strange quark, and it has to total up to minus one. The combination that works here is the strange anti up. And a strange quark has strangeness of minus one. So the left side has strangeness of minus one. If we look at the right side, 
I mean, the K plus is the antiparticle of K minus, so it must have the opposite strangeness, which is 1. Now, the K0, being its own antiparticle, has two different quark structures. It has strangeness of minus 1 and strangeness of 1. It can have, you know, either. Whatever it pleases. So, on the right side, on the left side, we have strangeness of minus 1. On the right side, we can either have strangeness of 2 or a strangeness of 0. So, X must have a strangeness of minus 1 or minus 3 to be able to um, conserve charge it. Let's bring up our little quark table. The combinations that work here, if strangeness, has a ch uh, if strangeness is minus 1, then the combination that works here is strange down down. That gives a barrier number of 1, gives a charge of minus 1, and a strangeness of minus 1, so it works. If X is going to have a strangeness of minus 3, then a strange, strange, strange combination would work. That, once again, has a barrier number of 1, a charge of minus 1, and strangeness of minus 3. So either of those quark combinations can be X. Now, you'll notice that we didn't name this particle. We just gave it the quark structure. That's the thing. Sometimes the exam's going to be sneaky, and sometimes you won't have to know what the name of a particle is. You just need to be able to deduce the quark structure. So that's it from me for this video, guys. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, I'd appreciate a like and a comment. And of course, subscribe for the future lectures. Have a fantastically brilliant day, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.